They've traveled across the state in recent weeks, and now Democratic presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders waiting to see who wins Kentucky's primary. And the whole country will be watching, too. We'll take a look at some of the other major races we'll be watching closely tonight, including the primaries and the U.S. Senate races. And a month after a fire destroyed some businesses in Moorhead, investigators have ruled it arson. The new details in the case. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening to you. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Right now, firefighters are working a two-alarm fire in a Lexington neighborhood. They say that fire started in one home and spread to another next door. We just received this video. Officer Don shot from sky first over the scene. You see the massive amount of smoke there. The fire is on Stansbury Cove. That's not far from Hayes Boulevard. Our Victor Puente has been watching this scene, and he'll join us a little bit later, hopefully. But uh, again, the fire, two homes now on fire, and also several other homes were threatened as well as Lexington firefighters were trying to uh, put out the fire, worried that it would spread to nearby homes. And we'll continue to update the situation uh, as it continues, but quite a fire there in a Lexington neighborhood off Hayes Boulevard. Well, polls are now closing across much of Kentucky. Now we are awaiting the first results from today's primary. And while the Democratic presidential race is getting the most attention out there, there were many other races on the ballot as well. We begin our campaign 2016 team coverage with political editor Bill Bryant. He has a look at what we'll be watching for tonight. Bill? Well, uh, you know, do you feel watched right now, huh? The whole country is watching Kentucky tonight for some cues and clues about the ongoing presidential race. Hillary Clinton put on an aggressive campaign blitz as she tried to stop late momentum by Bernie Sanders. Tonight's election takeaways. We'll be knowing shortly if the Clinton effort paid off or whether Sanders will get another win and keep the Democratic presidential nomination up in the air. In the U.S. Senate race in Kentucky, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is hoping to ride money, name recognition, and his record in office into a chance to take on Republican Rand Paul. Plus, we're keeping an eye on 6th District Congressman Andy Barr. He is running for re-election. Democratic State Senate Leader Ray Jones is heated battle against Attorney Glenn Hammond in the mountains. And a Republican push to take over the State House this fall. There are several candidates who are positioning for that. The polls closed in the Eastern Time Zone just a couple of minutes ago. In Western Kentucky, they won't close for another hour at 7 o'clock. It should be an interesting evening ahead. Sam and Amber, over there to you now. <laughs> Bill, thanks so much. And as he just mentioned, the national spotlight is on Kentucky for the results of the Democratic presidential primary. Now, both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders made many, many stops around the state, including in Lexington, over the last few weeks, hoping to win support. Our Sean Moody will be tracking the results tonight, and he continues our live campaign 2016 team coverage from Voting Precinct in Lexington. Sean, good evening. Hey there, Sam and Amber. There were a few voters coming in over the past half hour just before the polls here in the Eastern Time Zone started closing at 6 o'clock. One of the people working the precinct here told me they'd likely have right about a 20% turnout, which is what was predicted. Now, both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders have been across Kentucky back and forth in the weeks leading up trying to sway voters. We will know shortly how well that worked out for them. Here's a look at what's at stake here in Kentucky. Kentucky has 55 delegates and five superdelegates up for grabs today. Clinton and Sanders will split them based on the proportion of votes they receive. So far this primary season, Clinton has won 23 states to Sanders 19. Now here's where they stand as far as delegates go. Hillary Clinton has 2,239. Sanders has 1,462. Those numbers include superdelegates. To secure the nomination, one of the candidates would need to reach 2,383 delegates. Now the Clintons have had a good track record. Record in Kentucky. Bill Clinton took Kentucky in both the 1992 and 96 elections. Hillary Clinton beat Barack Obama here back in 2008. But a lot of Kentucky voters have taken a strong stance against Hillary Clinton after her comments on coal. Sanders also supports transitioning away from coal and other fossil fuels. Both Clinton and Sanders have said that it was important to them to help miners who lose their jobs find new opportunities. Now, as the evening goes on and returns start coming in, there will be watch parties uh, from both campaigns happening. Hillary Clinton supporters will gather at Parlay Social. Bernie Sanders supporters will watch results from the Kentucky Coffee Tree Cafe in Frankfort. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Thank you, Sean. In the U.S. Senate race, Republican incumbent Rand Paul seeking re-election, but he's facing some challengers in the primary. 
and Lexington Mayor Jim Gray among those running on the Democratic side for that U.S. Senate seat. Garrett Weimer joins us live now from the Gray Election Party in Lexington with a look at both sides of that U.S. Senate race. Garrett? Yeah, Senator Rand Paul is not having an election night party in Kentucky. He's back in Washington, D.C. right now here at Manchester Music Hall, though Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is expected to be here a little bit later, hoping for news that he'll be running for Paul's seat in the fall. Mayor Gray cast his ballot this morning, voting at his precinct of Harrison Elementary School here in Lexington. He told reporters he's confident he'll be the Democratic candidate for Senate, setting up a race against Senator Rand Paul in November. He did not shy away from taking a swipe at his expected future opponent. Well, I think when you've been running for president for five out of your six years as senator, and that's what Senator Paul's been doing, then he hasn't been able to represent the people of Kentucky. He knows more about the cornfields of Iowa and the coffee shops of New Hampshire than he does about the problems of Kentucky. I'll focus on the problems of Kentucky. I'll never run for president. From Washington, D.C., Senator Rand Paul says he voted by absentee ballot. He says he was staying in Washington because the Senate is still in session. This afternoon, he told our D.C. Bureau he was not preoccupied with running for president. I think I've been a great U.S. Senator so far. I uh, made 96 percent of my votes even while running for president. I've stood up for Kentucky against President Obama when he's trying to regulate out of existence one of our primary industries. I'm continuing to stand up against Hillary Clinton, who said that her policies are going to put coal miners out of business. The doors here have opened just a couple of minutes ago. People are starting to come in. Mayor Gray's election night event is starting to get underway. And Mayor Gray is expected to speak here tonight after the race is called. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. Now, it appears that most Kentucky voters did not go to the polls today. As we mentioned earlier, the Kentucky Secretary of State's office projected a 20% turnout. Election workers, though, at Lexington's Henry Clay High School estimate turnout at their precinct was even lower at around 15 percent. Some voters we talked to said that that low turnout is discouraging. For being the most free country in the world, America has a surprisingly low voter turnout, and that's really disappointing in my opinion because, I mean, you have the right to vote. You have the right to participate in your government. Some poll workers say despite the low turnout, they did have a steady stream of voters throughout the day. Stay with WKYT throughout the night for updates on election results. You'll find also a complete list of results updated constantly on our website. Just go to WKYT.com. More than a month after a fire destroyed two businesses in Moorhead, investigators now say it was set on purpose. Police say after looking at some surveillance video, they've determined this is an arson case. Monique Blair has the update on the investigation. More than a month ago, a fire completely destroyed these two businesses here on Main Street in the heart of downtown Moorhead. And now Moorhead police are telling us why they believe this fire was intentionally set. Moorhead police say arson is to blame for the fire that started just before 2 a.m. on April 12th. The fire destroyed H2 a wireless and tobacco store and also Electric Beach Tanning on West Main Street. Police tell us they were able to recover some video that showed several vehicles next to the businesses just before they went up in flames. Police tell us one of the videos shows a person enter the building and then a short time later the video shows flames coming from the building. I think it possibly could have killed someone. I thought it was a real bad move what they done. Although nobody was hurt in the fire, 10 employees of the tanning salon lost their jobs after the fire destroyed the building. And now as what's left of this building still sits as a constant reminder of what happened. Longtime Moorhead resident James Brown tells me although knowing someone intentionally caused this damage is upsetting. He says it won't bring the town of Moorhead down. The people that owns the store and the electric beach here and stuff like that, uh, it's, I think it, it ruined them. It don't ruin the town, though. Now, no arrests have been made in this case yet, and anyone with information is asked to call the Moorhead Police Department. In Moorhead, Monique Blair, WKYT. After that fire, the owner of the building told us the damage was likely close to a million dollars. It was an ugly crime, vandals damaging and stealing landscaping outside of Lexington Preschool. But a company has offered a beautiful gesture to help out. That's next. And we are keeping an eye on those first election returns as they come in. An update coming up. 
Weather-wise, a very ugly election day wrapping up across central and eastern Kentucky. We'll see if we can find a little break in the ugly. Seven-day forecast is right after the break. Stay with us. A landscaping company has offered to help a Lexington preschool that lost many of its outdoor plants. Volunteers planted more than $2,500 worth of plants and landscaping outside Growing Together Preschool on Georgetown Road. But managers of the preschool say vandals later stole or destroyed most of it. According to Urban County Councilwoman Siobhan Akers, Henkel Denmark has offered to replace all of the landscaping lost to the vandals. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Rainy, rainy day out there. The chill in the air. March at its absolute finest or worst. The problem with that is it's the middle of May. May doing its best impersonation of March. We look outside. Confused yet? Ah, hang in there. We'll get you even more confused. We look outside. Hamburg Pavilion, low clouds, showers, and some areas of drizzle. It is 52 degrees in Lexington. To add a little misery into the mix, the winds coming out of the northeast at 13 miles an hour. That's a chilly wind. It is only 49 Maysville, 50 into Moorhead, southeastern Kentucky, and those counties that border Tennessee were right at 70 this afternoon. So you're looking at your neighbors to the north and just laughing. Yeah, keep it up. All right, enjoy the weather down there, Southern Kentucky. You've earned it, though. You've had some ugly stuff, too. Central Kentucky, rains from the bluegrass region and north beginning to scoot on out of town. Watch another little round of some rain coming out of the Shelbyville area that extends back to the west now with rain and maybe a rumble of thunder into parts of western Kentucky at some point over the next few hours. 24 hour forecast tomorrow morning. It's ugly again. You're going to wake up, you're going to look outside, and you're going to be awfully, awfully discouraged again. Hang in there. We get deep into the afternoon. Potential is there for at least a partly sunny sky. I say potential. I know if you're like me, you'll believe it when you see it at this point. Temperatures that should at least hit the 60s. That's good. It should be in the mid and upper 70s, though. Baby steps. Rain likely tomorrow morning. Much better toward the end of the day. That Thursday forecast, fabulous. 70 to 75 partly to mostly sunny. And then we go the other way quickly on Friday. Rain, some rumbles of thunder are back into town. Locally heavy downpours likely. Here's the new hour by hour for the evening into the overnight and early tomorrow morning. It is wet no matter how you slice it. Noon tomorrow still leftover shower or two. We get into the heart of tomorrow afternoon. Clouds are going to be awfully, awfully stubborn to break. But at least some partly cloudy skies. I can't rule out an isolated shower that can even pop tomorrow evening. We go into Thursday, 40s to start, near 70, if not some low 70s to end, partly to mostly sunny skies. 8 o'clock Friday morning, here we go. Rain coming in from the southwest that will become heavy at times. And look at the numbers that will be cooler yet again on Friday, much cooler than what we're talking about tomorrow and uh, into the day on Thursday, courtesy of this storm system that rolls its way out of Texas to Tennessee and then works its way across the lower Ohio Valley. 68 tomorrow, that comes late in the day. Most of tomorrow with a lot of clouds around and some rain in the morning. Uh, circle Thursday on your calendar to get outside, yard work or just to enjoy 74. Weekend with rains around again to start things out. I do think we get a little better come late Saturday and especially Sunday into early next week. Chris, thank you very much. All right. All right. We are starting to see some of those very first returns, albeit early, come in today from the primary. And we welcome Bill Bryant to the anchor desk. And uh, Bill, exciting night ahead. We're going to talk about some presidential numbers, I think, first. And we have those uh, just in, and uh, we're looking at those right now. As you can see uh, exactly uh, what is going on. And here you see Hillary Clinton off to an early lead in the very early numbers that we have over Bernie Sanders. And, of course, uh, Western Kentucky is still voting. The central time zones will vote until 7 o'clock our time this evening. Now we move to the Senate race and on the Republican side here. Rand Paul is expected uh, with a considerable lead there. Rand Paul expected to get the Republican nomination easily tonight and then uh, go on to defend his seat in the Senate. Of course, his earlier plan was to uh, run for uh, the presidency. He attempted to run for two things at once. It ended up that he uh, left the presidential run and is focusing now on his Senate campaign. On the Democratic side, there's a familiar name there to most people in Lexington. And as expected, with uh, advantages including name identification, more money, and uh, a record of uh, public service, Jim Gray, uh, at this point out to an early lead. Celis Wilder, uh, who uh, billed himself openly as a progressive uh, candidate, uh, is uh, running second at this uh, point. 
Quick question. Why did Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton spend so much time in this state the last week? Why? Because we, we don't have that many electoral votes. Correct. At this point, it's not the delegate count. It is the momentum mm -hmm. going into the last primaries, especially California, and also into that convention. Nobody wants to go limping into the convention to claim the nomination. Well, we will continue to bring you some of these numbers as soon as we get them, both here and on WKYT.com as well. Thank you for being here. All right, right. More to come tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Preakness uh, lost one of its top contenders, Rob. He finished in the money in the Kentucky Derby, but he is not going this weekend at Pimlico. What is the line of thinking there? And the latest on Marcus Lee as the NBA draft lottery comes up tonight. Stay with us. Sports is next. The NBA draft lottery is tonight, and former Wildcat Carl Anthony Towns will be there. Towns will represent the Minnesota Timberwolves and his late coach Flip Saunders. Carl said earlier today, tweeting out that he will be wearing one of Saunders' wedding rings around his neck. Saunders died last October after a battle with cancer. He and the Wolves made Towns the number one overall pick. Devin Booker will represent Phoenix tonight, and Willie Cauley Stein will be on stage representing Sacramento. What is going on with Marcus Lee? The latest news coming out of the draft is that Lee has canceled his remaining workouts. Lee did not have a good showing at the NBA Combine. And according to Adam Zagoria of SNY TV, Lee has now canceled at least three workouts. Remember, Lee said he wasn't hiring an agent. He did say, however, that he wasn't opposed to spending time in the D League if he was not drafted. Most mock drafts have him going undrafted. Another blow for Matthew Mitchell and company, forward Shannon Scott from Myers Park in Charlotte has reopened her recruiting. That's according to an announcement by her mother on Twitter, who also left her phone number. Scott picked UK over Tennessee, East Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Indiana. Gunrunner, third place finisher in the Derby, will not run in Saturday's Preakness Stakes. The Louisiana Derby winner would have been one of the stronger challengers to Nyquist, but trainer Steve Asmussen said this morning that he will pass. Gunrunner will continue training at Churchill Downs. Asmussen said the cold is in tremendous physical condition coming out of the Derby, and he is planning a serious summer of three year old races for Gunrunner. The NCAA softball tournament will open Friday. The Wildcats are the number nine seed. They will host the regional starting out against Butler. The Cats finished the regular season with a school record 43 wins. There's 17 SEC wins, also the most ever. For UK senior class, it is hard not to think about making a return to the College World Series. It's hard not to look ahead, um, but I'm trying to really just live in the moment because I know that it's soon to be over. So, um, yeah, just trying to focus, um, you know, on the next day and living in the moment every day and soaking it all up. There's um, always uh, the will to win uh, regionals because for the past three years, uh, our senior class has made it to super, so we want to keep that tradition going. And check this out. Kentucky's Tyler McDaniel is tied for the lead, heading into the final round of the NCAA Golf Regional in Tuscaloosa. McDaniel out of Clay County, a 5-under 67 today. UK's Lucas Euler is tied for fifth. He shot 71. Team standings, the Cats are in third place at 1-under for the tournament, nine shots behind Georgia, leading the field at 10-under. South Carolina is in second place the final round is tomorrow. Coach Brian Craig with uh, one of the better teams that he has had in a few years, and they are showing it down in Tuscaloosa. Sam Amber, back to you. Rob, thank you. A final check of your first alert forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, war and poverty forcing one woman to put her daughter up for adoption. And now you'll see their reunion 50 years in the making. We want to update you now on some breaking news that we first told you about at the top of this newscast. Lexington firefighters have been on the scene of a huge fire in a neighborhood. That fire started about 4.30 this afternoon at a home on Stansbury Cove that's near Hayes Boulevard. They say the fire then spread to a home next door. 
Firefighters tell us they believe that everyone got out safely from these homes that you see on fire here. They expect to be on the scene for uh, much of the night. At this point, they are not sure what caused the fire. We'll have the very latest on the fire tonight at 11. We'll also have updates tonight on WKYT.com and the WKYT News app. Now, more results are coming in right now from today's primary election. And we are joined again by WKYT's Bill Bryant, again with another update. Of course, these are very early numbers coming in, so let's get right to them. Let's look at the uh, presidential race here, the Democratic side, obviously, tonight. And as you can see, Hillary Clinton continuing a lead here in Kentucky. The uh, very early uh, trends have to be encouraging for Clinton. Uh, of course, uh, her campaign went all in to try to win Kentucky. She made stops. Her husband was here. Her daughter was here. Uh, and they were very hard. Bernie Sanders, though, uh, not far behind, and uh, we'll continue to watch uh, as those numbers come in tonight. Now the U.S. Senate race, and that involves the incumbent Rand Paul, who Bill right now has and continues to have a commanding lead. Well, it would appear that uh, he is easily going to win the renomination, certainly, of the Republican Party. And it also appears, when we switch over to a look at the Democratic side, that Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is off to uh, an early lead and a strong start this evening. Uh, it will be interesting uh, in the uh, months ahead to see this uh, Paul versus Gray race that looks to be uh, taking shape after tonight. Of course, again, they're still voting in Western Kentucky. Kentucky mm -hmm. and will until 7 o'clock. So all of the trends uh, could shift as we uh, get additional numbers throughout the evening. You know, we heard the number 20% voter turnout many places saying it didn't even get anywhere near that today. I think that's going to be optimistic, mm -hmm. it looks like. As Chris is saying, the weather's been terrible. <laughs> Indeed. We, we, and we don't have them right now, but we have a host of state, house, and senate races also that people yeah, voted yeah. on today. And, you know, and the Republicans and Democrats are trying to position in this primary for this uh, showdown over the state legislature, the state house. Uh, uh, in the fall, the Republicans uh, hoping to take over the House for the first time since the 1920s. All right, we'll be here with you tonight and check WKYT.com as well.